Ladies and gentlemen, USP turned 50 last year and of course has a long and distinguished history serving the needs of the Pacific. We are all students of life and many of us today are students, current, past, future of this university. Today marks the beginning or the opening of the doors of higher learning for all of you to the next generation of students. Of course, you will get an insight into the various mysteries of the academic life at USP and of course, uh, if you choose university as your future tertiary um, institution, you will experience tertiary life as many of us have gone through it. You know, indeed, it's very exciting, very different from the primary and the secondary uh, school life. So uh, if I can say tertiary education really opens up new horizons, it opens up new doors, it opens up new experiences, it also allows you to build up relationships and of course as you move forward to contribute to the economy of not only Fiji but uh, the region as well. I'm indeed honored today to address you as many of you will become future professionals, future entrepreneurs and future leaders of our great nation and the communities from which you come from. Some of you may be the first in your family to consider attending university, so congratulations are in order. Many of you may have other family members or siblings who have attended university before and congratulations on continuing in their footsteps. Ladies and gentlemen, the future, especially those students, the future of the country and the Pacific lies in your hands, you our youths. We like many other Pacific nations have in invested a lot of resources to shape our future generations as per the theme of this year's USP Open Day and I quote, shaping Pacific futures. We have a responsibility towards our youth through our actions and our words to guide our future leaders who will guide our future. As governments, if, if I can repeat, we have a responsibility towards you, our youths. Through our actions and our words, we will guide our future leaders who will guide the future of this nation and the Pacific. I believe that through the support of governments and our shared vision, we will continue to invest in our students and provide you the best of the platform to turn your dreams into reality. This is how we can collectively shape our Pacific futures. The Fijian government is committed to ensuring that we secure a future that is sustainable, addresses climate change, that ins inspires an ambition for a better life for all. And I believe a life in which education plays a very, very major role. Ladies and gentlemen, Fiji has transitioned into an economic hub of the Pacific and is fast becoming a global leader and advocate on key areas and each year we continue to build on all that progresses. Our Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Economy undertook an inclusive and extensive budget consultations which included you, the secondary school students, the tertiary students across the country. We have heard your views and have incorporated them into the budget announced on June 2019. The Fijian government has allocated more than $800 million to the education sector. That is over 21% of the national budget, of which more than $100 million is committed to higher education institutions. We are committed to meeting a, a key development target in our 20-year development plans, and that is all Fijians to have access to quality education at all levels. Our commitment to education is further enhanced in government's five-year development plan. And if I, if I may take you through that, one is to ensure every Fijian student has equal and unrestrained access to education. Improve the quality of education at all levels in Fiji's education system, from preschool to universities to technical colleges. Of course, improving standards for the technical and vocational curriculum in Fiji and enhancing support for higher education institutions. We will continue with our key policies of free education, free textbooks, subsidized transportation to school and tertiary scholarships. We have equal access to education as a result and seen an increase in enrollment at all levels of education. In year 2014, we assisted 5,940 higher education students. And in 2019, we are assisting 25,471 students of course, that's an increase of 328%. And this has been through an allocation of $181 million for scholarships and loans. Of course, we expect numbers to rise and more Fijians are realizing the dream of tertiary education. 
This is an excellent example of the Beni Marama boom that was highlighted in the 2019-20 budget. And of course, you, you saw the drama with the boom detergent packets in parliament. I'm not talking to that. I'm talking to the Beni Marama boom. So ladies and gentlemen, we are working with our universities to address our skills shortage areas in labor market through our national topper scheme. Over time, we want to see well-qualified and trained graduates absorbed to meet the demands of our growing economy. We continuously emphasize the need for the higher education institutions to review curriculum to ensure that graduates that come out with both the hard and soft skills required for the labor market. Of course, we are focused on quality and quality. We want to use education for all, not only to find jobs, but create jobs through creative initiatives like the Young Entrepreneurship Scheme. It is all about providing the space and the resources to encourage innovation, talent, and creativity for you to realize your dreams. The 2017 census shows that more than half of our population is below the age of 27. With targeted support and resources, we can nurture and we will nurture productive, educated, ambitious, and entrepreneurial Fijians and brothers and sisters from the regions with USP's focus on entrepreneurship for the past six years. The Faculty of Science, ladies and gentlemen, Science, Technology and Environment in particular has an entrepreneurship cell that supports the development of ideas. So these graduates can use YES to support the incubation of the innovative ideas. USP now has an innovation hub and co-working space that will allow students, academics, researchers, experts, entrepreneurs and social innovators from across the region to share ideas, network, and to work together and collaborate on projects. These are the kinds of initiatives that we need in order to nurture our students, our future. I believe that tertiary institutions like the University of the South Pacific plays a critical role in creating these spaces and opportunities to realize the ambitions of the Pacific region as a whole. Uh, if I can also mention at this point, I remembered what the VC said, USB is ranked 50th in the Oceania region. At the top 50, sorry, top 50. Can, can we put our hands together for that? That's indeed an achievement. And I wish we continue to r climb up the ladder and improve on our rankings. But top 50 is indeed an achievement for the university. And I'd like to congratulate all who have been part of this university our partners, um, our development partners, uh, and everybody else for, for, for taking us to that level and putting Fiji there. USB is, of course, our regional university. So ladies and gentlemen, we as individuals and as a community need to take action now. We are therefore undertaking some key initiatives to strictly enforce legislations and adherence to the laws to preserve our natural environment. And as students, as future, I think uh, being entrusted in uh, climate change issues, mitigation and adaptation is something that we'd like to encourage all students and educators to be part of that. That's very important, okay? Many a times we hear about climate change, we talk about climate change. Climate change is a reality for us in the Pacific, especially for us in Fiji. Um, I think last week uh, we've been traveling around the country talking about the aftermaths of the natural disasters. And, and we need to be prepared for that. We need to actually be better prepared to face the adversities that come with natural disasters and you and I both know that we can expect severe cyclones, severe floods and, and God knows what, what more. So um, getting engaged in climate change issues and creating awareness through universities and, uh, and as students and as academics, uh, we, we need to know what role we play, what part we have to play. So ladies and gentlemen, we are increasing the duty on plastic bags and we are also on track to ban single-use plastics from 1st January 2020 and that's not too far. That's not too far. So the use of these plastics, I think again I, I need not uh, uh, emphasize on this, you all know, is literally choking the life out of our environment, particularly our marine and marine life. However, we need more nations to follow suit as the plastic from other countries ends up in, the, in our own uh, Pacific Ocean as well. We are also placing zero duty on all non-plastic food packaging, for example, straws, containers, and cutlery. It is wonderful at this USP Open Day, US, the university has banned the use of plastic bags. 
PET bottles and the use of balloons. And I acknowledge and commend the university's efforts in keeping to government's global commitment and call to action. However, ladies and gentlemen, this need not be just a one-off action that we all can do. Let us practice that in our daily lives. Let us take this concept back to our organizations too, to all the principals and teachers and students who are there. Let, let us put this practice in our own institutions so that we can continue with the call to ensure that we protect our environment from these uh, plastics. Of course, furthermore, USP is uniquely placed in a region of extraordinary physical, social and economic diversity. Coming back to diversity, the, our university is a classic example of uh, unity in diversity and we just saw uh, that with the performance of the Pacifica Voices. Okay? And um, with 14 campuses in its 12 member countries, numerous international accreditations, flexibility in the mode of study, strong employability of graduates and affordability, USP is clearly an attractive option for our students here and in the region. While being conscious of the changing landscape of higher education, I believe USP must now further accelerate its own transformation to a higher level by adequately responding to the challenges and opportunities facing our nations and our region. USP has en enhanced its brand by continuing to accredit more uh, programs internationally. Already it has 27 internationally accredited programs and 15 international recognitions. Indeed, an achievement. It has also achieved a significant milestone in obtaining Western Association of Schools and Colleges accreditation in June 2018. So the university has not only set its own standard, but increased the value of the university brand and recognition of its high quality programs. And I'm sure it's branding that is very important in today's world. We get attracted to brands and university has stemmed, stemmed its brand uh, um, in terms of the recognition of its high quality programs. To the students, the university gives you a choice of comprehensive range of relevant qualification many of which can be pursued at all campuses and in a variety of formats, face-to-face, -face, online, flexible learning, or via a mix of modes. In addition, the University of South Pacific students have access to the Disability Resource Center, which caters specifically for the needs of the students with special abilities. In the recent budget, $266,000 has been allocated for scholarships for students with special needs to enroll into tertiary institutions and we expect a total of 48 students to benefit from this budget. Ladies and gentlemen, USP's academic programs are geared towards developing academic excellence, intellectual curiosity and integ integrity, capacity for leadership and working for others, appreciation of the cultures of the Pacific including cross-cultural experiences. Therefore, as the largest contributor to this university, the Fijian government expects nothing short of the best from USP or the graduates from University of the South Pacific. To all your students present here today, I wish you well for your final exams. Study hard, perform your best, burn that midnight oil to qualify for the National Topper Scholarships, a place in the tertiary institution. And I hope and I pray that your experience here today at the USP Lodala campus, as well as all those students who will be taking part in the open day at the Lotoka and Lambasa campuses, will inspire you and allow you to make the right choice to join the university of your choice. I also take this opportunity to remind students to take, take up courses that will assist you to find a job or start your own business through, innovative, through developing innovative ideas. We look forward for students to be more job creators rather than being job seekers. Ladies and gentlemen, and of course dear students and the principals and the teachers here, guide your students to make the right career choice, which is very important. And of course, making the right career choice and the right decision at the right time of your life has a lot of impact on the rest of your life. So please use today as an opportunity to learn about this prestigious university, its programs and courses, meet the lecturers and professors and of course speak to the current students to get a better understanding of what it will be like when you join. Most importantly, use this time to appreciate the challenges and the opportunities of the next phase in your life's journey. Today is about making the next step. 
Today is about making the right choice for the next step. And of course, today is about deciding for the future. It is about shaping your future as an individual of, and, and that of your country. With that next step, ladies and gentlemen, there needs to make a commitment to your studies which comes with a lot of responsibilities and sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, dear students, we cannot deny the fact that in Fiji, our students, our Fijians face same social issues like other countries across the globe. Drug abuse, alcohol, violence, cyberbullying, mental health, teenage pregnancies, STI, HIV, NCDs, the suicide, and I'm sure the list goes and on and on. So let us make a pledge. Let us make a pledge today that the choices that we are going to make today will definitely be choices in the right direction. I mean, I stand here to advocate against drug abuse. I've never said it publicly, but today I'm pleading with all the students, let's keep our campuses, let's keep our schools drug free. And we need to take a pledge and we need to take action. Because day and night you read, you read about the drug war that we are currently trying, which we're having. And, and I believe, I, I believe, personally I believe it destroys. Drugs destroys. It destroys families, it destroys relationships, it destroys everything that you have taken years and years to build. And I stand as a testament to that. So please, let us all pledge that we will stay away from these things. As educators, as lecturers, as professors, as tertiary institutions, as educational institutions, we need to make sure that we keep our children and ourselves away from these socialist issues that continue to plague our society that continues to destroy lives of our people. And of course, if we foresee the future, it, can, it has the power to destroy nations. And, and we need to start. We need to start now if we have not started. So I urge with the management of USP to please see that we keep these campuses free. We protect our children from the harmful effects of everything, alcohol, smoking, drugs that I talked about. Let's keep it uh, violent free. Let's be aware, let's make our students aware of the issues that are current. Let's not, let's not say it doesn't, because it's not me, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me, no. As educators, I think we all owe it to our children and owe it to the country to see that we protect ourselves from all this. And I strongly believe, ladies and gentlemen, that we can pre prevent these issues through education and strong support from teachers, parents, and our community. We should be able to fight these things off. We can be proactive when it comes to awareness and outreach. We need, we need to remove the stigma of mental health issues as well. And of course, we must need to work with parents. That's very important. Many at times we see there's a gap between what happens in schools and institutions and the link that needs to be developed with the parents. Include parents, it's very important. And to all the parents who'd be listening, who'll be, who are accompanying the, the children here this morning, you have a very important role to play when it comes to molding the behavior of your children. The children, the behavior that the children bring to our schools, the behavior that the children bring to institutions is a result of the home environment. Let us strengthen our families. Let us strengthen discipline within our own homes. And of course, this will lead us to a more positive path. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have the freedom to choose. And you have the freedom to choose what's best for you. And you have the freedom to decide on the future that you want for you and your country. So the ball is in your court. And I would just urge that let's choose the right direction and let's choose the positive path so that you and all I can, you, you and I both can enjoy and our future generations can enjoy, can enjoy the Fiji that we are trying to create. So with these words, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you well for the day and congratulations for being here. To the students from the Maritime School, please, uh, I'd like to wish you all a safe journey back home. To the teachers who are here, please look after your children. Uh, I definitely wouldn't want to hear reports of children missing or running away or not uh, reaching home. Enjoy the day. Have the best of the day, and uh, God bless you all. Well, what a passionate, inspiring, encouraging uh, speech delivered by an educator. We can now.